Well, I come out here and I didn't have, I got all the way down to all the money I had was $14. And I, I had a 1976 Dodge truck I'd bought when I sold my new truck and furnished the house. I bought a 1976 Dodge truck that needed a valve job on it. Got it pretty cheap. I put it in the yard, and I was real, getting real weak. I was down then to about 150 pounds. Mm -hmm. And on Thanksgiving Day, Jeannie still nearly gets a tear in her eye, her seeing me climbing the hood of that truck, pulling the heads off and doing a valve job on it, sick as a dog. And weak. Colitis makes you real weak. I was using the bathroom 50, 60, 80 times a day, passing blood. I actually thought I was dying, and I was, I was actually dying. But anyway, uh, I took that $14 I had, and I, I went to a fella I knew and asked him where he bought coal at, because I needed some coal to, to make knives with. And he told me I could get some in Havana, which is uh, about 15 miles north of Tallahassee, a town called Havana, it's a little antique town now. They had a planter exchange hardware there, and I went there and bought 100 pounds of coal, and I had that Dodge truck, and I put, filled up the tank with gas. And I come home, and I took the back side of a vacuum cleaner and a brake drum and made me a forge. I made me a vice out of a piece. I had a bunch of junk up here that I brought with me, some all three. Chatting, the, the chatting men, they can't live without a junk pile. We all work out of a junk pile. Our junk piles is treasures to us. Uh, every day, if you see me out here working, I'll walk to my junk pile two or three times because I'm gonna get something out of there I need. And uh, and we keep building it up, building it up all we can because that's our that's our Walmart. Mm -hmm. And so anyway, uh, I took and built me a forge and I built me a vise out of some two by fours and some all thread. And I had a five gallon can of files, I had a piece of leather, and I had about a three by four foot sheet of, of a quarter inch thick micarta, which micarta is, is, is a, it's a man-made fiber made out of cloth and resin, cloth and resin stacked up, and it gets real hard, and it doesn't shrink and swell with weather, and it makes a real good knife handle. And I had some brass here, and I had a drill press, and some of my tools that I had brought up from Tampa, and hacksaws, hand hacksaws, and I took in a, come out here and I beat out three knife blades and I and I hand drew them down with a file other files put them in the vise and took the took the uh, temper out and I took the uh, the teeth off the other files with a file and I beat some pretty blades out I still got pictures of the first three knives I built and I was real sick and getting sicker but I was broke and uh, so I walked over to my new house was being built at the time I'd done paid for it to get built and uh, one of the carpenters over there, I showed him one of them knives, and the old man over there didn't have but one ear on one side of his head. The other one got cut off by a plow. It fell between a plow when he was a kid, and a plow come by and sheared off one of his ears. But anyway, uh, the old man told me, he said, look here, Mr. Chatton. He called me Mr. Chatton. He said, I don't know a thing in the world about knives, but I do know this. He said, that's the prettiest knife I've ever seen in my life. He said, I don't believe. He said, I've been watching you out there working on them knives. It took me two weeks to make them three knives. He says, he says, there's, I said, well, I'm wanting to sell them. He said, well, he said, I know a man in Tallahassee that's a knife nut. And said, he's got plenty of money. I says, well, you just tell me how to get to him. So he told me it's James Harrison on Tallahassee Furniture. I said, okay. So I had enough gas to get to town, didn't know if I had enough to get back. I took a ball pin hammer just four left, and I beat, beat out a little hatchet out of it. We used to make them when we was kids. And beat out a little, pretty little Tommy Hawk looking hatchet. Put a new handle in it. And I carried them three knives, and I walked into Tallahassee Furniture. I found a place. I didn't even know how to get around Tallahassee very good. I walked in there, and I said, I need to see uh, Mr. James Harrison. About that time, a fella that weighed about 400 pounds walked out from around the counter. and said, yeah, what do you need to see him for? I said, I'm the new knife maker in town. He said, oh, yeah? I said, yes, sir. I said, I hear you like knives. He said, yeah, that's right. He said, he said, what you got? I laid them three knives on the counter and that little hatchet. And oh, uh, he looked at them, took them out. And I, I had the leather. I made some beautiful hand-sewn sheaths, 
And he pulled the knives out, looked on seeing if they'd shave and everything. And he checked them out and he slid one to the side. He said, how much is that one? I didn't know quite what to charge for a knife up here, you know. I said, that in there is $100. He just reached in his pocket, pulled out a wad of money like that and flipped me a $100 bill. He said, how about that little hatchet right there? I said, $25. He gave me $25. Now, to a man that's totally broke, I thought I'd won the lottery. You know, here I was, 100% broke, even though I was sick. And I wasn't allowed to eat hardly nothing. I'd done been seeing doctors. Now, I had, when I built my houses, built my house and paid this land off, I had $6,000 left. And in a sight of two or three months, the doctors in the area had my $6,000. I had no insurance or nothing. They took every red cent I had. But anyway, now I had $125. And I stopped on the way home and bought me a Wendy's hamburger. And I thought I'd died and gone to heaven. I knew I was going to suffer. But I didn't care. I was celebrating. And so I headed home.